proud motto of the progressive town. This film was taken during the year of Wallace's Charter Jubilee celebrations, not to depict the life of the borough over the last 50 years, but to show its activity today, 1960. Service in fulfillment of its motto, we are bold whilst we are cautious. Things which are seen and things which are not seen. Things which affect the daily lives of its 103,000 people, the very old and the very young. Here, 16,000 children are taught by over 600 teachers in 54 schools and over 2,000 young people and adults attend day and evening classes. Each child is educated according to its age, ability and aptitude, both as an individual and as a member of a community. Training is directed towards both mind and body, since education is concerned with the whole child. There is wide variety in the teaching of music to infants, to juniors, and to older children. Whilst dramatic work is a feature in all schools, is combined with other interesting and varied activities. And these methods give children a sound understanding of number and values in ways which are both pleasant and enjoyable. These boys are working in the metalwork room of a secondary modern school, where up-to-date equipment offers a variety of valuable practical opportunities. Others are making observations at a school weather station. Children of all ages are encouraged to find things out for themselves in various ways. By study in well-stocked libraries and by observing, by picking out a tune, and by practical work in well-equipped school laboratories. Some schools have fully equipped flats in which girls prepare to be homemakers. They learn the art of entertaining guests who use their leisure time in worthwhile and satisfying ways. Boys learn how to make and mend for the home in activities which will be of considerable value to them in later life. Wallace's Technical College provides technical and vocational training. In modern machine shops, students are trained in the operation of machine tools. Absorbing experiments are carried out in the mechanics laboratory, and facilities are provided for training students over a wide range of industrial, commercial, and scientific work. Many future careers have been established through the training provided by these educational services. Arts and crafts are important subjects and educational media. The creative instinct flourishes at infant level. Clay modeling and other pursuits affording early opportunities for self-expression. These secondary school boys are working on a mural. Wallace's schools are vigorous, purposeful communities in which outdoor games provide an outlet for youthful exuberance and develop the team spirit. These, with clubs, societies and indoor games, all contribute to a child's education. The inner needs of the children are not overlooked and nearly one and a half million school meals and two and a half million bottles of milk are consumed annually. Children needing special consideration are educated at the Claremont and Ellery Park schools. 
where teaching staffs, specially trained for the work, devote themselves unsparingly to the care and well-being of their young children. Authority is also concerned in placing young people in suitable employment. And later on in life, there are opportunities for everyone, young people and adults, to continue their hobbies and interests at the School of Art and Women's Educational Centres. Education is not complete whilst there is a book to be read. Library facilities are available in various parts of the borough, catering for a wide variety of tastes from fiction to the classics. More than a million books are borrowed every year by children and adults from every walk of life. The library service can supply every need either from its own well-filled shelves or through a system of borrowing from other libraries throughout the country. In the children's library, restrictions are few, the atmosphere friendly and inviting. In these congenial surroundings, some come to borrow books and some to study. Facilities are provided for quiet study in the central reference library, where more than 10,000 volumes are available. Here can be found standard works in art and science, modern works of reference, dictionaries, atlases, and government publications. Personal inquiries are also dealt with by the library staff, and many residents take advantage of the Holiday Information Centre, which has become a permanent annual feature of the library service. Documents, maps and photographs which unfold the history of the borough are carefully preserved. Every year 20,000 books are selected and bought, not only new works, but books of all types and from many countries. But books do not become a library until properly listed and classified. Skilled work involving the use of a complex system of indexing enables a single volume to be found without difficulty. books and those damaged by a careless borrower have to be repaired. The essential task of the librarian is to get the right book into the right hands at the right time. Books without end, hands without end. Where can a more pleasant place be found to enjoy a good book than in a park, quiet, alone by a tranquil lake. Parks where the young may play, and where the old may stay, sometimes daydreaming an hour away. Parks where some may walk, and some must work. Wallasey people are proud of their 40 parks, and no one is prouder than the men who spend their lives creating fresh vistas of beauty every spring. Gardening today has been developed into a highly skilled and scientific job, and in the nurseries at Central Park, the most modern methods, including the use of infrared lamps, have been introduced to ensure that the young plants are given every chance to blossom into the lovely displays that add colour and beauty to many parts of the town as well as the parks themselves. only one small facet of the works which are directed from the office of the borough engineer and surveyor. Here he discusses with a colleague a new project. In his office in the town hall, the varied aspects of many types of works are discussed and planned. It might be the replanning of one of the borough's older districts, a new road to be laid, or the resurfacing of part of the 125 miles of public highways that already exist in the borough, or new development schemes to be inspected to ensure conformity with the local bylaws. He has 
too, many day-to-day -day tasks to supervise. His staff are responsible for the maintenance of the town's 5,500 street lamps, the cleanliness of the borough, the sweeping of roads, the cleaning of drains, the clearing away of the inevitable clutter often left behind by the hundreds of thousands of visitors who come to New Brighton and Morton to enjoy a day by the sea during the summer months. The collection of our household refuse, such a vital contribution to the health of the community, entails a good deal more work than merely emptying a bin into one of the department's refuse lorries. Much of the refuse collected is salvaged, and substantial quantities of paper and tin are baled weekly at the destructor works and sold back to industry. This is why it's so important that these items should be kept separate from other domestic refuse. The central depot for the Borough Engineer and Surveyor's Works Department is at Mill Lane. Here, a variety of trades and occupations are engaged in the maintenance and production of many of the things we take for granted. The seats in our parks, the litter bins we so often forget to use, 101 jobs essential to the work of the department. Occasionally, a really unusual task comes along, such as clearing away this now derelict gun site near the seafront and reinstating the land for the peacetime pleasures of picnics in the sun. The council's municipal self-service laundry provides another aspect of the department's work. At Oakdale Road, housewives enjoy the most up-to-date washing facilities available. Perhaps the best known of the buildings which come under the care of the borough engineer and surveyor are the swimming pools. The indoor pool at Guinea Gap is reputed to be the fastest in the country. At Harrison Drive and New Brighton, there are magnificent open-air pools in which thousands enjoy a summer dip in seawater cleansed and treated and pumped into the pools from giant reservoirs. The members of the Beach Patrol are well known to holiday visitors. Every summer they patrol the borough's seven miles of coastline, alert and watchful. The town planning work of the department has included the sighting of many well-known industrial establishments. The Borough Architects Department is the youngest of the corporation departments and was established by the council in 1949 to plan and design their considerable post-war building projects. Projects which early provided housing estates in the Morton and Liso areas on flat sites devoid of any natural features, necessitating the careful siting of the buildings in order to create pleasant places and attractive vistas. In appropriate sites, full advantage has been taken of mature trees in incorporating them within the development. The total value of the post-war building undertaken by the department is in the region of 10 million pounds. And at the present time, the value of building in course of erection is 1 million pounds, with a further 1 million pounds in the planning stage. In a film of short duration, it's only possible to show a few of the post-war building projects. Housing and schools have formed the major part of the department's work, but other municipal buildings, such as children's homes, hostels for old people, public shelters and sports pavilions have been erected. Thirteen post-war schools have been built and more are contemplated, and there's a considerable extension to the technical college. The department is engaged on the redevelopment of blitzed and slum clearance sites. It's also responsible for the repair and maintenance of corporation property, involving an annual expenditure of 80,000 pounds and 150 building operatives are directly employed to carry out this work. Further tasks are undertaken in connection with valuation for mortgage, inspection of properties to be acquired by the council, and slum clearance, improvement grants, and the clean air bill. A supply of pure, wholesome water is a vital service for any modern community, and each day Wallasey consumes four million gallons. Approximately half of this is obtained from the Alban Reservoir in Denbyshire, an artificial lake formed by a dam 450 feet long and 100 feet high across the River Alwyn. This soft moorland water is subjected to chemical treatment and filtration, giving a high degree of chemical and bacteriological purity.
further supply is obtained through the River D abstraction scheme, in which Wallace Yard partners with Birkenhead Corporation. Lake Banner is the source of the River D, and in 1951, the country boroughs of Wallace and Birkenhead, together with other water undertakings, undertook to share with the D and Cluid River Board the cost of works at Lake Banner, which would increase the dry weather flow of the River D. These works were completed in 1956 at a cost of 650,000 pounds. This scheme has resulted in considerable economies in the provision of essential additional water supplies for the two towns. From the intake pump house on the banks of the Dee, water is given primary treatment in sedimentation tanks and is then conveyed by underground pipeline to sea land for final filtration and chemical treatment, thence by pipeline to Wallace. New building calls for continuous extension of mains and to each property a service pipe must be laid. The maintenance of a high degree of purity of the public water supply is a matter of the greatest importance and some 200 samples each year are subjected to routine bacteriological and chemical tests in the water department's laboratories. Water for many purposes. Water for many purposes. Thousands of gallons, for example, help to keep the sea green of the borough's motor buses clean and fresh. This washing plant enables Wallace's modern fleet to be maintained regularly and efficiently. Wallace was the first borough in the country to put into regular service the new Atlantean vehicles, acknowledged to be the most luxurious of municipal buses with their power-operated doors and interior heating to take away the chill of winter. 21 different routes reach out from Seacombe Ferry to all parts of the borough, serving not only those who travel to business in Liverpool and Birkenhead, but also the many who have to move about within the town at all times of the day, part of the 30 million passengers who travel annually on the buses. To maintain the impeccable regularity of the service requires an organization calling upon the skill and resources of many backroom workers seldom, if ever, seen by the travelling public. They are the personnel of the motorbus depot at Seaview Road, the clerical staff, the technicians, mechanics, painters, upholsterers and cleaners who collaborate to ensure that the vehicles are maintained at peak efficiency so that the people who travel in them can do so confident of a comfortable and safe journey to their destinations. Buses are refueled and made ready for the next day's journey, an exacting, never-ending journey, covering three million miles every year. From bus to boat, countless Wallaceans make that change every day. No other local authority provides such a widely known transport system as Wallace Ferries, now nearly a hundred years old and with a history stretching back beyond the beginnings of the borough. A service operated with renowned punctuality and which offers endless vistas of interest on the busy Mersey waterway. But of the millions of ferry passengers who regularly enjoy the trip, few have opportunities of seeing the work of the captain and officers on the bridge, which ensures a record of safety in all conditions of weather unsurpassed in the annals of public transport. most modern vessels of their type in the world, the Wallasey ferryboats were the first to be guided by shore-based radar, the magic eye which pierces the fog banks of the Mersey and guides the vessels safely and swiftly across the river. 
Members of the ferry's staff have been specially trained in the use of the radar equipment, and the service now provided also helps to guide the ferry boat sailing between Birkenhead and Liverpool. At New Brighton, the ferry's floating landing stage is the most exposed in the world. Occasionally, exceptional maintenance tasks have to be undertaken, such as the replacement of the bridges which lead from the landing stage to the ferry pier. This new bridge was built at Ripley and brought in sections by road to Wallasey, floated to New Brighton by barge, and placed in position by the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board's floating crane, Mammoth, a delicate operation. The new bridge was opened by the Right Honourable Ernest Marples, Minister of Transport and the Boroughs MP. Every year, 13 million passengers sail aboard the Wallasey ferryboats, many of them using the summer service between Liverpool and New Brighton. Pride of the fleet is the Royal Iris, which each summer gives a quarter of a million people the pleasure of a cruise on the Mersey. during which they can dance, sun themselves, or just listen to the river-wise commentary given by the cruise boat skipper, Captain McCormick, now almost as well known as the vessel of which he is master. Deals with the health and welfare services, and within this framework is the municipal midwifery service with its antenatal clinics for those mothers having their babies at home. The midwife gives the baby her bath, and at the end of the first fortnight, hands over to the health visitor. Friends have baby weighed, discuss her problems, and receive a check-up by the assistant medical officer. She may also have her baby immunized. There are three day nurseries in the borough where priority of admission is given to those mothers who have to go out to work. Comprehensive services are provided for school children in a variety of ways. The minor ailments clinic, where early treatment may prevent more serious developments, and the dental clinic, where an x-ray is being taken. Hearing tests in the schools may reveal deficiencies in the early stages. And eye examinations are conducted at the clinics. Training is an important feature. And Lastly, the school medical officer with the nurse examines a school lever. For the mentally handicapped children who cannot attend school, there is the junior training centre with its specially trained staff. Myelitis vaccination is now available for everybody under 40 years of age, and special evening sessions attended by many thousands of men and women are held at the clinics. The welfare services help the blind, the deaf, and the physically handicapped. Special handicraft classes are held regularly, offering employment to skilled fingers in a pleasant and sociable atmosphere. Residential accommodation is provided by the welfare services for old people requiring care and attention. There are three hostels and two more are to be provided in the near future. The superintendent and the staff of district nurses provide a vital service in the nursing of the sick and aged in their homes. Many who are in need of this special care and attention have good reason to remember with gratitude the selfless devotion of these ministering angels. The home helps play their part in the running of the home and the later years of life may be made the happier by their friendly help, not only in preparing meals, but in all manner of household tasks. The public health inspector's many duties include water sampling, housing inspection and overcrowding, food hygiene and other duties. And they are now taking steps in cooperation with industry and householders to ensure the air we breathe is clean. Not like
like this. The Weights and Measures inspectors test all types of measuring appliances at trade premises. Here a weighing bridge is being tested, safeguarding the interests of the community. Safeguarding the interests of the community too is the man in blue. Police officers who by their understanding have gained the confidence of old and young. And from whom the helping hand is ever ready for those in need. Many and varied are their duties. Investigation into the causes of accidents, the plotting of an accident map, and regular examination of school cycles are all part of their normal duties in the interests of road safety. Tasks for which they are particularly adapted come the way of the women's section of the force. Control of busy pedestrian crossings, interviewing female prisoners. the anxieties of a bewildered lost child find relief in her comforting care. Regular refresher classes serve to keep the officers at peak efficiency ready to deal with any situation. But why do people advertise an unoccupied house by not stopping the daily milk supply? This is an encouragement to crime and an open invitation to the intruder. Fortunately, an observant neighbour, knowing the occupants to be away, loses no time in notifying the police through a convenient police emergency pillar. The machinery to deal with an emergency is immediately put into effect and a wireless message is sent to one of the many police patrol cars on duty. This is received by an officer patrolling an area near to the scene of the incident and immediately the machinery of the law goes into action. criminals are caught red-handed. Many are brought to justice by the dogged perseverance of both uniformed and plain clothes branches. CID officers use scientific means in their investigations and the fingerprint system has been responsible for the apprehension of many criminals. Consultations between the chief constable and his senior officers ensure the efficient working of the service. A service epitomized in the familiar figure of the man in blue. And to the other men in blue, the fire brigade, seen here on the occasion of that annual inspection by Her Majesty's Inspector of Fire Services. Their efficiency is the reward of experience and training training which often includes an actual representation of reality. Here, firemen are engaged in an exercise simulating all the conditions of actuality. In the real thing, often the first signs are wisps of smoke from an upper window. An alert passerby uses the emergency button in a street telephone kiosk to set in motion the resources of a service ready to answer the call of duty instantly, at any time of the day or night. A smoke-filled room may well mean someone trapped and not only is property in peril, but life as well. Modern appliances and brave men combine in an all-out effort to reduce the tragedies which any fire, however small, may inevitably bring.
vital part of this organization is the ambulance service, by whose promptness and skill many lives which might otherwise be lost are saved. The latest equipment in resuscitation is carried in all ambulances, enabling immediate attention to be given to patients, a factor of primary importance in the battle to preserve life and property. From the preservation of life in time of peace to a readiness to preserve life in the event of war, the Civil Defence Corps provides an insurance against the horrors which would follow unpreparedness. Its members will be taking part in the greatest life-saving operation of all time. Wallace has a proud record of service under active wartime conditions, and the lessons of the past are a spur to those who have again shown their sense of duty. The training which these volunteers undertake may well save the lives of countless of their fellow citizens, bringing relief to the homeless, help to those in distress, and treatment to the sick and injured. These pictures give brief glimpses of civil defense volunteers in the various sections of the Corps, at work and at play. Also take a peek at one of the numerous activities of the Women's Voluntary Service, the provision of Meals on Wheels to the aged. The memory of those who made the supreme sacrifice in the two world wars is perpetuated in the annual Remembrance Day service. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. The financial administration for all departments is centralized in the borough treasurer's office. The best known part of the office is the public counter where rates and other corporation accounts are paid. The Treasurer's Department also prepares salary and wages records of all corporation employees on machines such as this. Accountancy and costing records are produced by modern punched card equipment. Sorting of cards is followed by tabulating. The tabulator prints analysis and totals of expenditure from the punched cards which have been produced from workmen's timesheets, paid invoices and other original documents. The center of municipal activity is the town clerk, chief administrative and executive officer of the corporation. It is his task and that of his staff to advise the mayor and members of the council on the legal aspects of local government and to coordinate the work of the other departments. When the council, composed of 48 representatives and 16 aldermen, assemble, the town clerk in his robes of office is the only official to sit alongside the mayor. The civic mace symbolizing the royal authority granted to Wallasey in the Charter of Incorporation 50 years ago, was presented to the borough by Alderman Sidney Dawson in 1914 to commemorate the visit of their majesties King George V and Queen Mary when the sovereign laid the foundation stone of the town hall. The visit of Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh is also commemorated by a plaque in the entrance hall. And at the top of the main staircase, stand the flags presented to the borough by American forces stationed in Wallasey during the last war. As well as being the administrative center of the borough, the town hall is also widely used for social functions. The most colorful of these are undoubtedly the civic receptions given every year by the mayor of the day. Receptions at which he and his mayoress meet people from all walks of life in the community they serve. the citizens of tomorrow are not forgotten. The mayor's children's party is one of the liveliest events which takes place at the town hall. There are other meals to be served and the catering staff provide for employees' needs in modern, well-equipped kitchens. Inquiries are dealt with courteously and when the day's work is done, many hands fulfill the necessary task of keeping the town hall clean. Municipal elections 
require much preliminary preparation. And equipment is being examined, and ballot boxes made ready by members of the town clerk's staff. The legal section forms a major part of the departmental work, and the senior assistant solicitor is seen preparing to conduct a case on behalf of the council. The children's publicity and road safety sections are also within the framework of the town clerk's department. In this children's home, where children who have become the responsibility of the council are cared for, a nurse is seen returning from a walk with her young charges. kiss brings to the child the feeling of security and love in a foster home. The popularity of New Brighton as a holiday resort is largely due to the constant work of the publicity and entertainment section and a wide variety of means are employed to provide for visitors of all ages and tastes. Bathing pools, the pier and other entertainments are popular features of a progressive program of which the beauty contests each summer attract many thousands of holidaymakers. Safety is the constant care of the authority, and its officer, with the cooperation of teachers and police, makes regular visits to schools and organizations of every kind. Sooty and Sweep are popular visitors to infant schools and serve to introduce the early lessons of safety pleasurably and in a manner easily remembered. The training of young cyclists forms a regular feature of the comprehensive work of road safety. An event of paramount importance in the civic and municipal life of the borough is the annual meeting of the council at which the mayor for the ensuing year is installed, a ceremony of dignity and decorum. In the company of members of the council, officials of the corporation and many guests, the mayor for the jubilee year receives the congratulations of the retiring mayor and on reading and signing the declaration of office addresses the distinguished gathering. So we end our brief glimpse into this story of public service, a story which will continue throughout the years with the progressiveness of thought and courage epitomized in the motto, Aldemus Dom Cavenus. <laughs>